boop. Happy Monday. Today is Monday, January the 31st, 2022, and today's daily Bible readings come to us from Psalm 56, 1 Kings 17, 8 through 16, and then 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 16. I'm going to take a look at 1 Corinthians and uh, talk about uh, God's wisdom. We speak about God's wisdom in this text, um, and Paul is talking a lot about it. He makes it quite clear that the knowledge that we have access to as believers is very different from, as he puts it, the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age. Um, in other words, like the, you know, the the common understanding about wisdom and the common wisdom and things that people understood or do understand, um, especially the the common things that, um, the, especially the very powerful under seem to understand, um, <clears throat> would have understood at his time, understand today. Uh, so what's the big difference? Well, as he puts it, it's temporal, right? Uh, in other words, it's it's passing, it's fleeting, it's it's just kind of about this world and just kind of about this cre- you know, the things as they are, and they, it doesn't transcend that. As he puts it, well, it's just it's stuck in time. Um, and so it's going to pass away. But he says, uh, like God himself, the knowledge that God shares with us as believers is eternal. It's uh, He uses the language of secret and hidden and prepared in advance for those who love him, <clears throat> which sounds kind of exclusive. But when I read this, I think about also kind of the culture that he was dealing with and things that were going on in the world. In a lot of ways, not very different from some of the things that we have to deal with today, although they're not probably as big and cool and powerful as they were back then. But um, sort of these um, these uh, the the mystery cults is what they would have called them back then and the kind of secret societies is what like john wesley and charles wesley would have referred to matter of fact when you were a methodist in their day and and for a long time afterwards if you were going to be a methodist you couldn't participate in these secret societies that were really just kind of carryovers of the gnostic religions of paul's time um these were religions that they claimed to have these exclusive rights to special knowledge and only they had it but you too you too could have access um and know these things and control this power yourself uh you know if you simply bought into it literally by buying into it into their club um you know you'd you'd pay money and you'd be indoctrinated and you'd go through these special rites and rituals where you'd be um become a special member of the special club and have these and then they'd have these secrets you know where you'd you'd make oaths and commitments uh remember you know swearing an oath where jesus tells you not to um basically you know reenact things that kind of like you act out your death and you're saying oh if i if i tell the secrets of our secret society may you you know i you can kill me kind of things um and so you too could know all those things if you bought into that uh and then that you would move up through the degrees of enlightenment um and through the seven levels of the candy cane forest and you too could have all the special knowledge um because you know uh oh, the best thing then is too that that you can when you see the other people that, you know, have been through the seven levels of the candy cane forest, then you can greet each other with a wink and a nod and a special handshake um, because you know, and they know that you know, and you know that they know that you know, and you know that nobody else around you knows because what's the fun of having the secret society and secret knowledge if everybody knows, if you can't exclude people? Um, you know, you got to keep some people out to keep it cool. In other words, you know, hey, you're not, you know, you haven't been through all the levels, so you don't get to participate. So, um, but, you know, here's the thing that Paul's saying, God's knowledge doesn't work like that. It's, it's, it's open source, as it were. Um, It's out there for everyone, but Paul acknowledges that not everyone is going to want it, Um, which admittedly for a lot of people that think that way, once you tell them that everybody can have this gift, you know, that this is a thing that he gives to just people who love him, you know, that kind of 
takes all the fun out of it for them. Um, you know, so for those who love him, the gift is free. And the gift that is given is one of discernment. Um, as John Wesley says, it's the ability to, to discern the nature of our relationship to God, how he loves us and what he intends for us. And also being able to discern, do we really love him in kind? Are we loving him back the way we should? And then as Charles Wesley also says that the ability uh, to, it's the ability to discern, discern the nature of others and their relationship to God so that we might encourage others then to pursue the God who loves them and wants to give them his knowledge if they'll just love him. They don't have to go through all the seven layers of the candy cane forest. Anyway, that's the DBR for today. Get out, enjoy the day, and we'll be back tomorrow. Boop.